I think bagels are one of the hardest recipes to make when you're a home baker. You think it's really hard to do. And that's how I felt before I started to bake with einkorn and before I created this recipe. Then I've discovered that anybody can make the most delicious bagels at home with einkorn and sourdough starter. And at my cooking classes, I make them for breakfast on the first morning. And then the rest of the week, I can overhear people saying, the only thing I really want to learn this week is how she makes those bagels. So let me show you how I do it. Okay, to make the dough, add the leaven, which is nice and bubbly, to a medium bowl. Combine that with 177 grams of water, or 3 quarters of a cup, and 2 teaspoons of maple syrup. Mix that together till the leaven has broken up a little bit, so it'll get creamy and not have kind of thick strands of starter. Okay, now add 540 grams of flour to a large bowl, and 2 teaspoons of salt. Mix that together, then transfer the liquids into the flour mixture. Use a really stiff spatula or the einkorn kneading tool to mix the dough together. Unlike most of the einkorn doughs that you make, bagel dough is actually pretty dry. And this is the kind of dough that you actually can put your fingers in and not get completely sticky. So when you feel like you can't mix it anymore with the kneading tool, then you can squeeze the dough together with your hands. Then when you're a little long, you are going to transfer the dough to your countertop and knead it on your countertop. Again, it's going to seem pretty dry if you're used to making most of the other recipes which are wetter. But that, this is correct for bagels. One little trick that I kind of don't mention in the cookbook is that when I get down to this point, my dough is almost completely together. I just Put a teeny bit of water on my hands. Just get them a little wet to finish out the dough. It just makes the dough, um, the kneading at the end, go much smoother. So when you knead the dough, you want to um, make sure that this part of your hand is pushing through the dough all the way. And then I kind of use the other hand to fold the dough back up into a round. You can also push this through and then push the other one through. Once your dough has come together and smoothed out, you're going to place it back in the bowl, cover it tightly with plastic wrap, let it rise for two to three hours until you see a 30 to 40 percent rise. You can let it sit out longer if your starter is new and it's not moving along too quickly. Most people who aren't experienced bakers don't think that they can shape a bagel, that it's really hard. But when I show people how to shape them at my cooking classes, they say, wow, I can totally do this. So, This recipe, I usually make 10 bagels. They're kind of a medium sized. If you want really large ones, you can make eight um, or you can make 12 to get a smaller bagel. It doesn't really vary the cooking time. So you divide the dough in half and then make five equal pieces, or you can weigh the whole entire piece and divide it by five. I put the pieces back in the bowl while I'm shaping, because I'm going to shape one at a time. Just cover them so they don't dry out. So to shape a bagel, you're just going to squeeze out the bubbles in between your hands, or you can also press it on the counter, and you form a bit of an oval shape with the dough. Then fold in one side, push it down, and then fold the other. Then you're going to start rolling. So you sort of stretch the dough out so that the center part is taller than the outside because that's going to give you that typical bagel shape like that. Now if you're doing that and you can feel that there's some bubbles underneath the surface of the dough, then I'm going to show you what to do because you don't want those bubbles because when the bagel cooks, it cooks at really high temperatures, it will kind of pop up in the oven and that little pocket will have a burnt spot on top. So let's just say I'm doing the usual shaping process. 
and I feel like there's a bubble right there. All I do is I fold it in half and I just sort of roll it up really, really tight to squeeze out the air. And then I start over again. You can always shape and reshape bread dough. So if you shape it and you don't like how it came out, just do it over again. It's not going to make a difference. Okay. Cover the bagels now with oiled plastic wrap so that the plastic wrap doesn't stick to the dough. Let that rise for 45 minutes. If your sourdough starter is new or it's really cold out, that time might need to be a little bit longer. You want to see the bagels kind of fluff up and become really light to the touch. So my bagels have risen. I've put a heavy baking sheet in the oven to preheat at 500 till it gets nice and hot. I've prepared two different types of toppings. I've got poppy seeds and a mix of Mediterranean spices. And I also put a medium saucepan with about two quarts of water on the stove to come to a rolling boil. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of baking soda. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna boil these bagels and then we're gonna put them right in the oven. Okay, so we pick these up with our hands and drop it in. They should come back up to the top pretty quickly. So that rose up to the top and started to float. If that doesn't happen, then you should put them back on the tray, cover them again with plastic wrap and let them rise for another hour because they're not ready. So you cook these for 20 seconds on the first side and 25 after you flip them over. And you'll see that the um, baking soda makes the bagel turn kind of a deep yellow color. So I flip this back over and then I place it on a cooling wrap because I want it to dry out while I'm cooking the other bagels so that when I put them on the baking sheet, they're completely dry. So once you get good at this, you can actually put in three bagels at a time. You're gonna think these look a little funny now because you think it might be what it's eventually gonna look like when they're fully cooked, but they've only partially cooked a little bit. So if they start to shrink a little bit, that's fine, because when we put them in the oven, they're gonna fill out. Okay, so if you want to add toppings, place them on the baking sheet, let it cool for about oh, 15 seconds or so till you can handle it. And then go for your next bagels, put those in the water. And if you don't wanna put toppings, you can just leave them on the tray and they're ready to go just as is. So you'll flip that over into the topping when it's still wet. That's how the toppings will stick to the bagel. Once you take that hot baking sheet out of the oven, you line it with parchment paper, transfer the bagels to it. Should be hot enough so you hear the bagels sizzle when they hit the paper. Then you're gonna bake this for 13 minutes until they start to turn golden on the top. So as you can see, these einkorn sourdough bagels are a total wow. They're really light and beautiful, and you can do this at home. I'm sure that once you taste these, you're gonna say, I don't even wanna go to the bakery to buy regular bagels because these taste even better made with einkorn.